Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. A while back, I did this tutorial for fans of horror and the macabre. Since I've received a huge response asking me to do more of this genre, I'll show you how to create this horrific dungeon wall. We'll pick up from my last tutorial in which I showed you how to create these rusted chains. I provided a direct link to it in the video's description. This document is 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Click off the eyeball of the chain copy to hide the layer and click on the chain layer to make it active. Press Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac to make a composite snapshot. Go to Filter, Render and Lighting Effects. The Lighting Effects window will open. We'll choose Spot the color is white, intensity 52, hotspot 96, and exposure gloss and metallic 100, and ambiance 22. Play with the inner and outer rings to get the effect you want. The outer ring changes the overall size and angle of the spotlight, while the inner ring determines the amount of drop-off, which is how sharp you want your spotlight to be. You can also change the intensity of the spotlight by rotating the dial inside the inner circle. When you're happy with the spotlight, go to the top and click OK. Click on the chain copy layer to make it active and click back on the eyeball to make it visible. Go to the new layer icon to make a new layer. Go to the chain copy and shift click on it. This highlights both layers. Press Ctrl or Command E to merge them. Now the drop shadow is fused with the chain. We want to get rid of the chain's shadow within the shadows of the wall since any shadow cast on the wall would have the same tonal value. Call up your eraser tool and I'm choosing a 70 point size with a hardness of 0% and an opacity of 100. I'll erase away the areas of the chain within the wall's shadow. It's revealing the composite snapshot beneath it that doesn't have the chain's drop shadow on it. Now we can merge these two layers together. We're ready to scroll some text into the concrete wall. Call up your pencil tool and I'm choosing a 9 point size with a hardness of 100. Press F5 to call up your brush presets. Click on brush tip shape and make the size 9, the roundness 100, the hardness 100 and the spacing 25. Click on shape dynamics. Make the size jitter 100, the minimum diameter and angle jitter 0, the roundness jitter 100, and the minimum roundness 1%. We can close the brush presets. Click on the quick mask icon and scroll your text onto the wall. Press Q to make your quick mask into a selection and Control shift i or Command shift i on a Mac to invert it. With your composite layer active, press Ctrl or Command plus J to cut the selection from the image and copy it to its own layer. Let's rename the layer Text. Double click on it to call up its layer style window. Click on Bevel and Emboss. Choose Inner Bevel, the Depth 100%, the Direction Down, the Technique Chisel Hard, and the Size 4 pixels. Uncheck Global Light. Make the Angle 62, and the altitude 11 degrees. We'll be adding a splatter texture to the wall and the chain. I provided a link to it in the video's description so you can download it directly. Open the splatter document and click anywhere on it. Drag it up onto the tab of your chain dungeon document and without releasing your mouse or pen drag it down onto the image and then release. Click on your adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. I'm choosing 8C0404. Presently the gradient adjustment layer is affecting all the layers beneath it in the layers panel. We want it to affect only the splatter layer. Hover your cursor between the two layers and press and hold Alt or Option. When you see a clipping mask icon appear, click down. This moves the adjustment layer to the right which indicates that it's adjusting only the one layer beneath it. Click on the splatter layer to make it active and change the blend mode to multiply. Go to the chain link and press Control or Command as you click on it. 
This will call up its selection. Click on the layer mask icon, which makes a layer mask of the selection next to the splatter. Click off the chain link. This allows us to move or effect either layer independently of the other. Go to the adjustment layer and shift click on it, which highlights both layers. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to make a copy of both layers. Hide the copies by turning off their eyeballs and make the original splatter active. To reposition it, click on it and move it. Go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. We'll keep the angle at 90 degrees and make the distance 35. To make the splatter copy appear on the wall outside the chain, make the splatter copy layer and its adjustment layer visible and click on the layer mask to make it active. We need to invert it. To do this, press Ctrl or Command plus I. To reposition it, click on the splatter layer to make it active and move it. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur, and this time we'll move it a distance of 140 pixels. Let's give the smear a little distortion. Go to Filter, Distort, and Zigzag. We'll make the amount 1, the ridges 20, and the style pond ripples. The last step will be to give the smear the look of age and wear. Call up your eraser tool. Click on the brush size and click on the gear icon on the right. This opens your list of brush presets. I'm choosing a set I called Grunge Brushes. You can download this for free at BrushEasy.com. Just type in Grunge Brushes and choose the set you like. If you're not sure how to download brushes, watch my tutorial showing you how to do this. You can find the link to this tutorial located in the video's description. Click OK so we'll just see this set of brushes in the thumbnails window. I'll click on this brush and change the size to 1300 pixels. Go to the top and click down once. Click on the splatter that's inside the chain and I'll change the size to 250 pixels. Go to the area you'd like to wear away and click down a few times. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.